Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, folks. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. We have a great show today. We're going to talk about antibiotic usage in cattle operations. Our guest, Dr. Fred Gingrich, and he is from Ashland, Ohio, and we're going to be joining him and talking about different ways and different understandings of using antibiotics on your ranch or on your dairy farm. The benefits we've seen with multi-min is, is mainly in our conception rate uh, in our AI program. We've seen a 5 to 6 percent increase in our conception rate, which is huge in, in what we do. Uh, take 5 to 6 percent increase in your conception rate with seven, 800 cows, that's a bunch more AI calves. So that's where we see the big return is in our conception rate on our AI program. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Welcome to the show, Dr. Gingrich. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. And folks, we have Dr. Fred Gingrich, who is an owner and operator of a mixed animal practice in, in Ashland, Ohio, but you do a lot with dairy cattle as well. Yes, uh, most of my work is with uh, dairy farms um, uh, and a little bit with uh, beef operations. Awesome. And as you can see from our backdrop, we're on the road today. And, and so Doc Talk is breaking out of the, the studio and we're out and about so that we can pick up people from different parts of the United States and, and really start to expand the, the vision and, and the understanding of what's going on within our industries uh, nationally and, and globally. And, and uh, you know, Fred, you've been very active with the bovine practitioners and, and you're very active on, on many different fronts. And, and one of the fronts that, that you're active on is this antibiotic usage in, in cattle. Absolutely, and I think it's a, you know, it's a real hot topic issue right now um, uh, on farms with consumers and with uh, legislation as well. Yeah, and I think it's hard to, you know, sometimes to make the tie from the producer to the packer to the consumer, and then we make that jump to legislatively, um, and then everybody's affected all the way along. Absolutely, and you know, uh, you know, farmers and ranchers want access to these products, and you know, we all need to use them responsibly. And we need consumers to have, you know, the confidence that the uh, that the animals that we're raising for food uh, are treated uh, well, and that their food is safe. Yeah, and when you start to think about antibiotics and and their usage, you know, it's one of those things that whether you say, op, you know, pre-harvest, harvest consumer, the veterinarian's integral. Absolutely, and I think uh, you know consumers they want veterinarians to be involved, and uh, you know we're going to talk a little bit today about you know why uh, farmers and ranchers uh, should have veterinarians involved, how it's advantageous both to their operation as well as uh, you know to the health and productivity of their animals. Right, and 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 as we move along, we'll talk about that veterinary client patient relationship, um, but you know. When, when we think about antibiotics and we go back to antibiotics, what are some of the, the talking points when you're talking to your producers, you know, about, you know, using it on the label or using it per directions and mm -hmm. things to that nature? You know, I think the, the, the number one thing uh, that we want to make sure of is that, that the animals that are getting treated with antibiotics should be treated with antibiotics. And so, you know, there needs to be some type of formal decision-making process on the farm, either with the farmer or their employees, about how they're going to use antibiotics and make sure they're using them in an appropriate manner. You bet. Well, we're about time for a break now, and so we'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to continue our discussion with Dr. Fred Gingrich, who is from Ashland, Ohio. We're talking about antibiotics usage on farms for beef cattle and dairy operations. You're watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad that you joined us today. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. And by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. 
Norbrook offers a comprehensive economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power, with a power stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Hi there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here and Doc Talk is on the road. And we are visiting with Dr. Fred Gingrich, who is a mixed animal practitioner and owner who does a lot of dairy and beef cattle work in the Ashland, Ohio area. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule that we could get you here uh, to visit on an important topic, antibiotics and, and food animal production. But Let's start out with what we call the VCPR, the Veterinary Client Patient Relationship. Well, the VCPR is, uh, is an integral part of using any type of uh, drug on dairy and beef farms. I mean, it's actually a, a federal law um, called AMDUCA, the Animal Medical Drug Use Act, and essentially uh, that describes how veterinarians should have input on uh, use of antibiotics on farms. And so when we start to think about this, and, and, and the VCPR is, is, you know, kind of a, one of those debated what exactly it is or what constitutes a veterinary client patient relationship, what are some of the things that go through your thought process when you're saying, okay, I have a VCPR with this beef producer or dairy producer? You know, I think there's probably three uh, important points of a VCPR. The first one is, that that veterinarian is familiar with the animals and the farm operation. And that can take a, a, a various forms. Um, veterinary visits to the farm are a very integral part of that uh, familiarity with the operation. I think the second part of a VCPR is um, we want to make sure that producers are keeping accurate treatment records of the animals that they uh, treat. Sure. Um, that's extremely important. And then the third part is, is that there needs to be some oversight or some monitoring of those records um, to ensure that uh, the antibiotics or other drugs are being used in the most effective manner that uh, we can use them. Yeah. And, and I think that, that uh, you know, it, it gets back to, I, I don't know that, that the producers sometimes understand the value of that VCPR in protecting them mm -hmm. and protecting the, the, you know, the, the, the food that they're producing. Yeah. You know, uh, the FDA has stated that one of the biggest things they find in violative residue issues is that there's a lack of a VCPR, that having an adequate VCPR um, decreases the risk of having uh, residues and, and all farmers want to avoid those residues um, and, and those violations. 
by having that VCPR, veterinarians can both decrease the risk of a residue as well as improve the effectiveness of a, of a farmer or rancher's treatment on their animals. And oftentimes we see that that can greatly decrease their drug costs as well as improve the response of their animals and return them to health and productivity. Absolutely. And, and I think it's important to note that, that, you know, that, that when we have a residue issue, it goes back to those, those producers and, and they're on a, a list from and, that point forward. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we don't want, you know, one of our um, goals is, you know, um, to have no residues. Uh, you know, it's a lofty goal, but that's what we're always striving for. We do not want, uh, you know, our producers to be visited by the FDA. And, and by having that goal, we also can improve the confidence in the food that we're making. I think it's great. After the break, we'll have more with Dr. Fred Gingrich. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. This hog is Hanover Hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Join the team, the Beef Quality Assurance Team. Getting BQA certified shows you're committed to practices that produce the highest quality beef in the world. And by visiting BQA.org, you can take the online certification course at a time that fits your schedule and from the comfort of your home or office. You'll also find lots of helpful tips on improving animal health and animal handling practices. Get certified, BQA certified, because it's about doing the right thing. Visit BQA.org today and become a member of the BQA team. Multiman is one of those products you can use to uh, get the ultimate uh, performance out of cattle. Around 90 to 95 percent of our calves are uh, either AI or embryo transplant. Uh, since we've started using the Multiman, we're up around 70 to 75 percent uh, conception on our first AI service. And a product like this is very beneficial for us. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University, and we're on the road today, and we're meeting with Dr. Fred Gingrich, who is a dairy and beef practitioner who owns a mixed animal practice in Ashland, Ohio. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate the, the discussion that we're having on antibiotics and, and, and judicious use of these antibiotics. And as we're talking during the break, we're saying, hey, let's talk about what kind of records people need to be keeping when they're, when they're on the farm or ranch. So what are some of the things that you recommend to your clients that, that we need to be keeping track of? You know, uh, the FDA has defined what they want in treatment records, and various uh, producer and veterinary organizations, such as AABP, um, have templates for what should be in treatment records. You know, the big items we want is we want an ID of the animal, we want the date they were treated, what they were treated with, how much um, they were treated with, how it was given, was it injection, IV, IM, um, we also want listed on there the appropriate uh, meat or milk uh, withholding times. And then it's a good idea, especially for larger operations, to record who gave the treatment, the employee. Oh, yeah, and then you can go back and, and, and double check to make sure that we don't have an a operator error uh, within the operation. When, when you're talking about withholding times, mm -hmm. uh, how, do, how do we come up with withholding times and, and is that set by FDA, USDA? When products are approved, uh, the drug sponsors, uh, the pharmaceutical companies that are uh, requesting that approval for that product, they um, 
submit that data to the FDA and an appropriate uh, uh, withholding time is derived. Uh, they base it on the um, um, intake of that food product by people, called an average daily intake, and the FDA arrives at a safe level of that product in the, in the meat or milk. And it's typically in, in parts per million or parts per billion, a teaspoon in an Olympic swimming pool. Very minute amounts um, are, are that we deplete that level too before it's safe for human consumption. Gotcha. And, and so um, records, withholding times, you know, what's, what's something else that a producer probably needs to be, uh, you know, we talked about the valid veterinary client patient relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, what are what are some of the things that that any additional records or I think a big thing is is that when you're using a drug in an extra label manner yeah. how that affects uh, both the law and your withholding time and by that I would mean like uh, an, an example would be let's say you're giving a, um, a, a dairy cow penicillin mm -hmm. and the label for penicillin is about 10 cc's for an adult Holstein cow and most veterinarians and dairy producers use much higher doses for effectiveness of the product. Well, when you do that, you change the withhold. That's an extra label use. You're using it in a manner not listed on the label. Um, you need to then get that uh, information from your veterinarian what the appropriate meat and milk withholding time is. So all extra label use needs to have that veterinary input. Perfect. Well, we're gonna take a break. Great information, folks. Hope you're enjoying the show today. We'll be back here after the break. More with Dr. Fred Gingrich. I'm Katie Allen with K-State Research and Extension and got to visit with Dr. Jude Capper, who is a special guest lecturer here at Kansas State. Dr. Capper's research focuses on beef sustainability and the impact of the beef and dairy industries on the environment. The conventional beef industry has been sustainable and will continue to be because we know now far better how to treat our cattle, how to feed them, how to breed them, how to care for them every single day. So what that means is over the last 30 years or so, we use 12% less water per pound of beef, we use 33% less land per pound of beef, and the carbon footprint per pound has come down by 16%, which is a huge achievement on the behalf of the industry. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Fred Gingrich, who is a dairy and beef practitioner from the Ashland, Ohio area, and he also owns a mixed animal practice there. And we've had a great show and really enjoy you taking the time uh, to spend with us, uh, Fred. and and you know, when we talk about antibiotics, the big thing we want to avoid is residues in, in our food products. And that's the reason why it's so important that we manage these appropriately. But what, what's, let's just start out with what's residue. And what a residue is, is it's when a meat or milk, egg uh, product, a food product derived from an animal, has a, a level of antibiotic in it above what the FDA considers to be a safe level. Okay, and, and as we look through the beef and dairy industries, you know, what are some of our, I, w I don't want to call them problem products, mm -hmm. but there are some that cause us more issues, whether it's how we inject them or, or where, we, where we give them mm -hmm. that, that are causing us some problems. 
Well, the first thing I think is that we have made great strides. The number, the number of, uh, of meat and milk residues has decreased dramatically. And uh, that's through the efforts of both uh, farmers and veterinarians. But some of the most, uh, some of the common residues would be, uh, for instance, like flunixin or, or banamine is a common trade name. Giving that product in a manner not listed on the label, which is IV only, greatly increases the risk of a residue. And, uh, it's, a, and it's a great product. I mean, you know, that's the thing is, is that we're not here trying to, you know, say anything negative about a product. Absolutely. It's one of those things that's a service to the product because we want to make sure we have it to, to be able to utilize it. That's right. You know, we, we use a lot of it and it's, and it's a good product. Um, but it should be used, you know, according to the label or how it's written. Penicillin would be another one like we talked about. It's a common uh, cause of meat residues, and, you know, that's from using higher doses, like we talked about in the last segment, and not changing the withholding times. And I think it's important, too, that people understand that if you don't give, if, you, if it's an over-the-counter drug like penicillin, and you go buy it at the Fleet and Farm or wherever, and you use it at a dosage that's not on the label, you have to have veterinary oversight to be able to do that and so that you can get that extra withholding time. That's correct, that's extra label drug use. Yep. And in order to use a drug in an extra label manner, the direction has to come from a veterinarian. Not on each individual case, but you have to, if your veterinarian has prescribed a protocol for treating a disease with a certain antibiotic that's extra label, as long as that's come from your veterinarian and you follow his or her meat and withholding times and keep records, then you're in compliance. So what, what's kind of your bullet list on antibiotics? You know, I think the first one is get a diagnosis, have a protocol from your veterinarian and treat the animals that need to be treated appropriately and then keep good records and make sure that you're following the appropriate meat and milk withholding times. Thanks again for joining us today. It's been a great show. Thank you. Folks, I hope you enjoyed it. Some great information on, on a very practical and relevant issue that we're seeing in, in the operation. We want to keep our drugs working safe and uh, keep them in, the, in as a tool in the toolbox. If you want to know more about what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us at www.doctalktv.com. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. We appreciate you watching the show. You've been watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. Jonathan Perry from Deer Valley Farm, Fayetteville, Tennessee. We're a purebred registered Angus cattle operation consisting of about 1,700 head of purebred cattle. We've been using Multi-Men for about seven years. Uh, it's one of the most multi-use products that we have here on the farm. Bulls, cows, calves, weaning age cattle, just about everything on the place. If they go through the chute, they get a shot of it. We market our cattle here both through private treaty and public auctions. We host three annual auctions on our place each year. The quality of our product is evident by the repeat customers that we have year after year coming back to obtain our genetics to go work in their programs. And Multi-Men is a great aid in the health of those, those animals that leave here. We, we administer Multi-Men to the animals with our pre-breeding vaccines before we put in cedars and get ready to breed heifers. Uh, the primary use that we started Multi-Men was on our, in our donor program, and our embryo transplant program. Uh, we saw a, a significant increase in the quality of the embryos and the number of grade one embryos and, and the overall number of embryos that we received out of those donors. Uh, and then over the years, Multi-Men has, has done a great job of, of running trials and, and publishing data that shows multiple uses for, for the product. And with that, we expanded the use of it into other parts of our program. We've seen uh, a great increase in the general overall health and appearance of those cattle, the shine to their hair coat, the vigor in the calves, uh, 
quite a bit of boost in immunity, a lot less pools, a lot less cost for antibiotics to treat those animals. The one single advantage that I see in using multi-men over every other use that we use it for would be the increase in fertility and, and conception rate that we see in our herd from using it. I'd recommend multi-men to any, any producer in the cattle business, regardless of what segment of the industry they're in. Here at Deer Valley, every animal that goes through the chute gets a dose of multi -men.